never a good idea to move for love? I mean, think of it. We see it a lot. People are always moving for jobs, and that means relationships end up breaking up and moving forward. And when you ask your parents, many times they don't know because in their generation, that, that just didn't happen. People stayed at one job forever. So should you move? Well, it depends. It depends what you are moving for. If you're moving in the hopes of getting married to someone, or if you're moving because you are getting married to someone and you want to find a job in the same place so that once you do get married, you'll be all set. I'm going to give you a few things that I want you to consider before you decide whether or not you want to move for love. And the first of those is, do, are you under any illusion that if you move with this person, it's going to solve your relationship problems? If you feel that way, you're probably wrong. Why? Because moving is stressful. Making all the new address changes, finding the new businesses that you need, reestablishing friends, getting into a new work routine, getting into a new routine in general, being far away from your main support system, it's really, really stressful. And so the only reason I would say to move is that this is somebody you're really with and that basically, yes, you've been kind of plotting it and planning it. But if you think, and in that sense, you're like, well, it doesn't really matter. I already have some friends there. In that case, it might work out. But if you're thinking it's going to make it a lot easier because this long distance stuff is really hard and there's still no plan for the two of you together, then I would really rethink that one. Job prospects. That might be a good idea. I mean, what you're doing now, there may be a better opportunity for you wherever your loved one moved. And maybe your job is getting stale and you feel like you're not growing and you're getting depressed about it, then it may be good to take on a new prospect and start new jobs. But do this, start applying before you go. Because if you wait until you get there and have to depend on another person to take care of you until you do, that's gonna put stress on the relationship. It's not fair to you and it's not fair to your partner. Um, you talk about where you're living and if you plan to move in together and it just seems kind of so-so. If you allude at any time to your partner that, hey, I'd like to move out here with you and they seem lukewarm about it, I would say absolutely not. Unless you're going to live on the other side of town and not plan to see that person. Because couples who do that, you can kind of tell when you're talking to someone if their, if their vision aligns with you. And first of all, it, for me personally, if my vision wasn't really aligned with this person, I probably wouldn't go to where they are unless they were just a friend. And then I said, well, I want to I go to a bigger city and I want to start a new life and I want to start a, a better job and at least I have one friend. But don't put pressure on that one friend to become more than a friend. Because when you do that, you will deteriorate any relationship, friendship or not, that you have with that person. And you may find that you end up with a bigger void than what you ever anticipated. Um, unspoken expectations. If you're thinking underneath all of the other stuff, that when you get out there, things will change, this relationship will suddenly turn into the one you've always wanted, you are really going to be disappointed because I've seen it more than once. Can't tell you how many times. And then when that happens, there's a sense of not only let down, but being betrayed, being let on. And it, that may have not ever even been the truth, but our minds can blind us. Our thoughts of what we want many times can make us hear things that weren't said or weren't true. So just beware. Um, if you start resenting that you'll sacrifice a lot, let's say you're joining someone out there and they don't really have any connections, they don't have any social life or anything else, and you know their family, they can still drive pretty close to get to their family, but let's say it's a huge, a huge distance for you and you are really leaving not only family, but you're leaving everything you knew in order to be with this other person, 
please don't put yourself in a situation like that. I mean, have some sort of a plan that you can, that you can fall back on because resentment kills relationships. It starts out by killing your sex life and then it goes and totally destroys communication. It's not a good way to start a relationship or start a new life together in a new place. And lastly, always have a plan B. Should always have a plan B in life in general, but with this sort of thing relocating, have a plan B. Have a, and by plan B, I mean give yourself three months to start feeling better, to feel adjusted, to kind of get, you know, if you guys are planning a wedding, get some of that done. Personally, and I am being very honest with you, I would never relocate for love unless it was someone that I was committed to. We were going to get married, and in that point, I would still have my own place until I ended up married. I know it's not popular, I know it's not fiscally responsible, but as long as I can afford my own apartment, then I am gonna have my own place, my partner will have their own place. I want to maintain my independence and my wherewithal until I join this other person. The reason I say that is because when I'm counseling couples, guess what always comes back during a fight? This pre-marriage time. And if you moved out there and you moved in with your partner and things weren't said, and um, one partner felt like they were doing more of it, it was unbalanced, believe me, it's gonna come back to haunt you. So just be sure you communicate everything clearly up front. Good luck.